So God created them. Male and female, he created them. In the image of God, he created them. And God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. It's the first blessing in scripture that God gives to people. Be fruitful and multiply. God blessed them, Adam and Eve, with that commission. It's a phrase that when God uses, he means just like the trees produce fruit and make more trees, bear my image as the image bearers of God and make more image bearers and fill the earth with my image and with my glory. Enjoy this good creation that I've given you. Live the fullest version of your life. Be the best humans that you can. Be a part of this good creation. And as we turn the pages of the scriptures in the Old and the New Testament as well, that theme is going to be picked up on. And uh, different authors will comment on what they think it means to be fruitful and to multiply. And what a fruitful and, and life of multiplication looks like. The book of Exodus starts off, it's no coincidence, with the same phrase. It says, now the family of Joseph of Israel had come to Egypt because at the end of Genesis there was a famine and it goes through all of the people who came and there were 70 of them who came into the land but the children of Israel were fruitful and multiplied and filled the land and the idea that the book of Exodus is trying to comment on or teaches is that the people of God are living in the blessing of God the children of Israel are living as the promised inheritance of the great patriarch Abraham. They are being what God has called them to be. But there arose a king who knew not Joseph nor what he had done for Egypt. You see, in the story in Genesis, while, while man and woman are living and being fruitful and multiplying, there comes on the scene a new character. A character that is shrouded in mystery that we don't have a lot of understanding or depth on his name is the serpent and he comes to deceive and he comes to convince the people that they can become like God taking into their own hands the knowledge of good and evil or the declaration of this is good and this is not good which until that point has been only reserved for God he comes to set mankind up in the place of God and what they realize is it just produces death the serpent is to blame but as we move on into the story of Exodus it's not the serpent who shows up it's a new character this time it's Pharaoh and just as man and woman in the garden get caught in this cycle of deciding to be like God facing death wanting to repent but realizing they can't break the cycle now in the book of Exodus this cycle of death is imposed on God's people by an outside force it seems as if mankind has fallen to a point where even man will put each other into this cycle of death and destruction where being fruitful and multiplying is done away with but in Genesis chapter 1 2 and 3 when the serpent comes God promises a divine intervention to break the cycle of the serpent. In the book of Exodus, we're going to see again a divine intervention to break the cycle of injustice, to break the yoke of the slavery of Pharaoh, and to deliver his people so that they truly can be fruitful and multiply.